All right, everybody, welcome to Profiles Inc. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com and the Sign and Thrive Notary Training Course and Community. I'm excited today to introduce and welcome uh, Susie Sifkoff. I'm trying to unmute you, Susie. It's not working. There you go. Thank you so you got much. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I met Susie in the fall at Notary Symposium. Uh, with Laura Buer, that's her event in Southern California, and Susie was one of the presenters there. And I was drawn to you right away, Susie, because you got a room full of 100 notaries up there doing a dance. You got me to even <laughs> do a little stamp it dance, and I thought that was amazing. So thank you for that. In addition you're to welcome. that, you're a motivational speaker. You have I Can Spark. You have been with the National Notary Association for 16 years as a certified trainer. And of course, you're a mobile notary and loan signing agent and author of the all new book, Nota Rise. And it's Rise to Your Greatest Potential with the Three to Thrive. So, welcome, Susie. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Bye, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thank you to everybody who's tuning in on a Sunday to grow yourself and your business. So, one of the things, Susie, I love to use these profiles and in ink interviews for is origin stories. I love to hear how people, well, two questions. I love to hear how people got into this business, why they got into this business, but most importantly, why you've chosen to stay. So you can, can you share a little bit about why you even, how you even found Notary Public as a, as a business opportunity? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, my background is in education and public speaking. Uh, and I moved out to California for a change of pace. I'm from the East Coast. And uh, lo and behold, I found a job at the National Notary Association because they needed educators, public speakers, uh, to be able to travel around the nation and present. And so um, I uh, took the job thinking, oh, this will be fun for a little bit. And uh, here I am. So I was traveling all over the nation for about the first three years. In fact, at one point, I had kind of a full-time place in Philadelphia representing the National Notary Association on some of their electronic uh, seal endeavors. Uh, but that was way back in like 2004, 2005, before wow. everything really took off. Yeah. So anyways, um, no, I just, the, all the traveling I did and all of the connections I made with hundreds of thousands of notaries, there's just something extra special about your passion and your drive and your hustle. But not only all of that, the, the fact that you all are the best collaborators and you want to lift each other up in a competitive industry. And, and so I just I couldn't believe the NNA. At one point, I was so tired of traveling because I was on an airplane every week and, you know, part-time in for a while, living in Philly and part-time here. Uh, and so I thought, you know, I really need to figure out a way to get off the road, but I still want to work with the National Notary Association. So I came up with a brilliant plan. I got pregnant. And that, that did it. That took me off that the road. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I was able to convince them that I could stay and, and support them in other ways there at the NNA. Um, so I've been a little bit all over the place. I've, uh, I supported the other instructors for a while as their supervisor. Um, I've worked the hotline. I've uh, helped develop curriculum. And now I'm actually the knowledge product specialist in the product development site. A side of things where I just support all of the educational products that we release, uh, e-courses, books, all of that good stuff. Well, fantastic. Wow. Talk about, well, first you brought all of your previous knowledge and expertise and passion for what you were doing before and you applied it to this new career. So well, I, I love hearing that because I think a lot of the mistake a lot of notaries make is they, they become a notary public. They get excited about the lifestyle it can present, but then they forget that they had all of these skills and, um, a personality and relationships in a previous life that transfer over here really easily. For sure. In fact, in my notarized book, that's one of the things I kind of relate to the idea of, you know, we're all constellations of stars. We're not just one superstar, but uh, we've, we've become our own constellation that only we can create based on our experiences. Um, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, for my motivational speaking and uh, my uh, wellness programs, that I bring dance into it, you know, not, you don't see a lot of people able to get people up and dancing during, uh, you know, 500 people dancing in a room, 
Um, but that's, that's something that I want to bring with me because that's an energy and an experience I had as a hip hop dancer for a while. Um, but anyway, we all have our own experiences and relationships, like you've said, that have brought us to who we are. And those experiences and relationships, they all create a beautiful constellation that is you and can only be you. And uh, the industry needs that. The industry, you know, needs what you have to bring to it. I think that's the, hands down the biggest truth ever is that this industry creates craving your own individuality. It needs your personality. It needs yeah. your passion. It needs that one person that you met 20 years ago that changed your perspective and it allows you to show up to an appointment in just the right way at the right time. Yes. Uh, and, and I love that you brought up uh, from the book, even that concept you brought up of being a constellation instead of the shining star, I thought was an excellent uh, analogy just for life. Cause I think we get so, you know, we're comparators, comparator, yeah. we're compare. We compare. <laughs> We're comparers. Thank you. Uh, and so we sometimes we look and are like, oh, I'm not as busy as that guy, or she's got this, or she's got that. And everybody has their gifts. You have your gifts too. But mm -hmm. you're, uh, the way you describe this is not to be the shining star, but to bring everything with you and create a constellation. Yeah. Well, great. And can you expand on that a little bit? Like, where did that come from? How'd you come up with that? Or you know what? It's probably something that I pieced together from other, you know, inspiring talks that I've listened to. Um, I couldn't say that I've heard it set up just that way, yeah. but, um, you know, it's just, I started, uh, at one point in my life, I was comparing myself to all of the other people out there doing stuff that I thought I should be doing. Um, and, you know, as we've heard, comparison is the thief of joy. And for a while, I was so paralyzed in my own disappointment I wasn't that person, you know, and, um, and so when I was able to crawl out of my little hole and really take a look at what, you know, I'm going to bring God into this because I feel like, you know, uh, the universe, uh, you know, creator has, has blessed us all with certain experiences and certain, uh, talents. And so, you know, I can't, it, the way I look at it is now, after I crawled out of my hole, I, I don't want to hide something that I was created for. And um, I think Marianne Williamson is a, an inspiring author. And she, she has a whole thing where she says, uh, how dare you try to hide something and not shine the way that you were created to. So uh, yeah, I think a, a few different pep talks around the way have brought me to my constellation theory. That's, and they're so important to surround yourself with that level of affirmation. And in fact, um, I know part of your three to thrive is to help support that a little bit. And we'll get to that here in just a second. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I'm relating to you very much. And I'm sure, you, you know, someone who teaches and coaches and um, sees the potential in other people, it's a challenge I have too. My greatest challenge as a coach is to convince people of their own greatness. So mm -hmm, when you mm -hmm. when you shift perspectives like, like that, we can really make a difference, which brings me to your book. What inspired you to write a book like this? Well, because I also have such a passion for wellness um, about, well, my mom had breast cancer uh, when she was 50. Uh, she survived, but she did a lot of the, the healing through holistic type healing uh, versus a lot of medicine. Um, and it, you know, she had to really adjust her lifestyle, her diet, her exercise, um, and not only that, but her mindset. And, um, and at that point, it kind of planted that seed for me. And uh, since then, I, I just kind of had a hunger for learning more about wellness. Because, and I'm not talking about just a diet. I'm talking about just balance in your life and how to be a whole person so that you can bring everything that you were created to bring to the world. Um, and so uh, when I, when I kind of started thinking about my constellation, well, you know, wellness and, and, uh, my passion for that, along with my passion for the notaries that I encounter every day, um, just kind of brought it together. I've had so many conversations with notaries who say, I really want to do more. I really want to get to that next level. I have all these plans, but I feel stuck or I'm, I'm not able to because of this or that. And, um, so I wanted to, uh, help notaries and you know just anybody that's kind of doing the work that we do uh, because honestly mobile notary work is you know you don't have a, a set schedule you're in the car a lot 
it's hard to you know have consistent meal times and consistent bed times and and just take care of you the way that you should um and so i i just felt like maybe some of the things that i wanted to share would help the, my notary friends out there as well so glad you did too because this is not a it's not a technical guide it's not how to mm -hmm. notarize documents it's no. not how to market and promote this is about really in which what i loved about it is next level thinking and to me what really stuck out about this is that this is written for you know the notary who's gotten in it they've uh they got a little momentum they got good momentum things are moving right you're past the the really learning phase and then you're you kind of hit that plateau yeah. and you're like okay all right so what do i have to do next and what most people do is they look outside and they say, well, I have to sign up with more signing companies. I have to meet more escrow officers. I have to do this or that or whatever. And that's important for sure, you know, with all of that. But where the real growth comes is looking inside and mm -hmm. making sure that, you know, your business is never going to outgrow you. So you have to constantly keep growing and expanding yourself and your business comes along with it. The skills for building relationships, the skills for thinking positively throughout the day so you don't grind yourself into the ground. This is all very important. So this was, to me, a very next level book. That's, yes, thank you so much. And uh, something that you said also, uh, you know, made me want to point out that a lot of the notaries I know also are very, they're, they're people that are, are nurturing and, you know, they're out there to serve the public and help people. Um, and, you know, they're also people that have their own families, you know, and so uh, one thing that I have to remind myself of every day with my busy schedule and having children and is, you know, you got to put your own mask on, the oxygen mask on before you can help your child and you have to take care of yourself before you can help those people out there who need your support and your help or, you know, the people that you work with and for. So. You know, and I think with a, and this audience in particular, which I'm so grateful for, is very driven by the heart. This is the heart of the notary yes. here. You know, uh, this audience is here because you want to serve other people. And it's sometimes those who are servants to others sometimes forget to take care of themselves. Absolutely. I run into that. I talk to notaries every day that run into that too. So this is like a it's permission to put on your oxygen, oxygen mask and really get intentional about the day. And this is what I love. This is this is about using, optimizing every appointment, whether it's with a signer or an appointment with yourself, and using that to grow yourself every single day to get intentional. So that's why I'm excited to share it for you. So tell me, tell us what this book is. Tell us about Three to Thrive. Well, I start out actually, before I even introduce the Three to Thrive, I compare our notary standards of care uh, and kind of relate them to the idea of our own personal self-care. And one of the things you uh, said is just showing up for yourself. You know, one of the first things that you have to do as a notary is have that personal appearance. You have to meet face to face with your signer. And so when it comes to your own wellness, you know, you need to wake up in the morning and first connect with yourself, meet face to face with yourself and, uh, and just show up for yourself every day and say, I'm not doing this just for the people. I'm do, you know, I, I've got to do this for me first and, and, and put on my own mask first so that I can help those people. So I talk about that standard of care of just, you know, meeting face to face with yourself. And then I talk about deterring fraud and how so often we have goals and we have ideas or we have, you know, set up these ideas of things that we want to do for personal growth or for our family or for our community. But it's so busy with the everyday grind that we, those things, you know, fall to the wayside. And, in, and so in a way, you know, as notaries, we're deterring fraud out there for other people's personal commitment. We need to deter fraud in our own personal commitment. So we need to take the time every day to evaluate how can I make sure that I don't derail myself from this goal I have. Um, so I, you know, I kind of equate the idea of us deterring fraud and how we need to apply that to our own lives. You, you did that. You did such a good job blending that together too, guys. If you haven't read it, I think you guys will really enjoy it. But um, really did a good job of blending um, how we show up for our job and then how we can intertwine it into self-care. And what really popped out, I read your book again this morning. Um, it's a relatively quick read, guys, but um, as I was reading it to prepare for this morning, it really struck me on when you were talking about that we serve a role of integrity to others. We have to maintain that integrity with ourselves too. 
And if, I mean, how many on this call would just not show up to a notary appointment because you didn't feel like it? But how often do we do that to ourselves where we tell ourselves, okay, I'm going to wake up at six this morning and I'm going to go to the gym. Uh, and then we, at 6 a.m., that's not so exciting anymore. So we cancel yeah. that appointment with ourselves or our journaling or whatever it is. So that's such a critical element. And I related personally to this because I've shared my story of tons of failure, guys. I've had so many flops in business. And when I did the results inventory, I, you know, I landed on myself. I was the common denominator in all of those. It was the behavior I was either doing or not doing that resulted in those failures. And it wasn't until I learned to keep promises to myself with habits and routines that that all changed. So that, that chapter really landed well with me. So yeah, thank Bill, wow. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Certainly. I noticed you were posting about your morning routines lately, and that it actually inspired me to whip it into shape because since since this whole thing has happened with uh, COVID and my kids have been home and not at school, it's really disrupted the routine. And I, you know, the other day I made a proclamation to my family, I must go to bed by 10. I must wake up by seven and do my yoga and my meditation and prayer. Like, you know, I just made this proclamation um, just a few days ago because it's, it's, uh, kind of change things. It, do, it does. And it's so important. That is the first appointment you should keep with yourself every day in it because that sets the tone, not only for the day, but for your entire life. So I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. So what's next after, after oh. that? So three to thrive, um, three to thrive, uh, move, breathe and believe, but I keep those two pictures that are easy for people to, to kind of uh, get the concept and to remember. So um, the first concept is swamp versus sea. And the idea, if you think about a swamp, a swamp is, you know, very stagnant and murky and dirty, collects a lot of bugs, and there's crocodiles, you know, and that's what you picture when you picture a swamp. And then when you picture the sea, you think of the rolling, beautiful blue turquoise waters and the dolphins flashing around on the horizon and the warmth of the sun and the sand um, and the waves crashing on the beach. And then if you think about it, both of those, the swamp and the sea, are bodies of water, right? Mm -hmm. Made up of the same stuff. What makes the difference between one being the swamp and one being the sea? Well, one of the things without me being a scientist is movement. You know, the ocean is constantly moving and changing. And, um, and so then, you know, I, I kind of help us understand how we relate to that as humans because we're made of 65% water. And so, you know, we could either be a swamp or a sea within our own bodies, minds, and spirit. And what's going to make the difference between us being a swamp, feeling stagnant and murky versus us feeling alive and full of life and, uh, is going to be the idea of movement. And uh, not just movement physically, but also movement with our minds and our spirits creatively and, and with connection and things of that sort. Yeah, that, I remember hearing you speak to this even in October and it related right away because uh, when, you, when somebody says, I'm stagnant, how often do you hear that from other notaries? I just feel stagnant. I just feel like it's not moving. It really paints that picture of that just water sitting still, collecting bugs, nothing exciting happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and to spark that up, to create the waves, you've got, you've got to take action. You've got to... Uh, introduce your mind to new ideas, new skills, uh, new people to keep that, keep that moving. And then the physical side too is equally as important. Even if, you know, and I've struggled with the physical side, I've shared my story with that too. I'm just not a good sweater. I just don't like sweating and I'm not excited by activity, but I love how I feel after I'm active. So I've learned to integrate that um, at pro not excessive um, uh, speed, of course, but to integrate that before the mental benefit of exercise. And I know that's been a big part of your life moving through this. Um, or do you have any, any suggestions for those who want quick ideas on movement or ways sure, to yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, one thing you said was that how your mind feels after you've been out moving. Um, and you know, what, the difference in the energy, if you compare your energy when you're stuck on the couch feeling like you don't want to get up versus the energy you feel after you've moved, you know, that, that different energy, which kind of energy is really going to appeal to your customers and which kind of energy is really going to move your business. So it, it all is connected in a way. Um, 
it, for me, you know, I feel the same way. Sometimes I just want to come home from a long day and sit on the couch um, and not move. Uh, what I do is I try to trick myself. And so far it's worked. So don't tell, don't tell myself because I don't want to find out about this. Don't watch the replay then because we're, <laughs> we're letting it out. So for me, it's simple. I just, I just put on my tennis shoes and I say, I'm going to go for a five minute walk. It's five minutes just to get some fresh air. Once you're out and you've got your tennis shoes on you can, and you're breathing some fresh air for five minutes, it can convince you to just keep going a little bit longer. And before you know it, you know, you've taken a 20 or 30 minute walk and sometimes that's all you need. That's all it takes. Uh, you know, when I try to make a plan to, you know, I buy, I'll sometimes go out and buy like, like new workout clothes thinking that would inspire me, right? You know, if, but if I think about having to put on all the workout clothes and grab my cooling towel and my counter, what, whatever, like sometimes the big to do of it all just discourages me because then it becomes a production. But if I just put on my tennis shoes and go for a walk, um, you know, things that you've probably heard before, like parking further away in the parking lot and taking a little bit more time and just vacuuming the house, just do it with a little more vigor, a little dance in your step, and all of a sudden, you got that movement going on. Um, and then one thing that when I married my husband and I knew that he was, you know, going to, I was going to get pregnant and I was, my life was going to change. I wasn't going to be going out and dancing anymore. Um, one of the things I made him give me, I didn't care about a diamond ring. I just wanted a disco ball so that I could have my own little dance parties at home. So that's, that was one of my wedding gifts, was he bought me a disco ball. You have and a disco so ball in your living room? I have a disco ball in my living room, yes. Yeah, and uh, so it, it's been fun for all of us. You know, we turn on some music, we turn on the disco ball, and as a family, we just have some fun moving around the house. And, you know, five songs in, and you've, and you've had your workout. So it doesn't have to, yeah. it, it doesn't have to be complicated. I love that, you know, because I think so many of us have the all or nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I have to go through, I have to spend an hour doing this. But if you do start small, it's the tiny habits concept, just start small. For me, I started with one push up, and that's the only thing I could commit to. But then when you get down on the ground and you do one push up, it's kind of ridiculous just to get back up. <laughs> it almost takes more energy to do that. So then you end up right. doing a couple more that way. Yeah, well, oh, I I'm love that. Here. Might as well do a couple more. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what goes through my head because it's it is it's ridiculous to. Uh, another thing I do is you know if I'm sitting at home watching TV, I try to get on the floor and do some stretching instead of sitting on the couch. Um, yeah, I had some sciatic nerve problems uh, after my children were born, and um, I learned that you know stretching my body. Um, in the mornings and in the evenings really makes a difference. And I can do both. I can watch the TV and I can, you know, and like you said, once I get down on the floor and I'm doing a little, I might as well just keep going, you know? And so before you know it, you've, you've watched a whole show and you've got a nice little workout. A little stretch in or something. That's great. Yeah, exactly. So number one, a three to five, three to thrive is the movement. Number yes. two is junk in, junk out. So tell us about that. Okay. So Everybody's heard the concept, junk in equals junk out. If you're putting junk in, then that's what you're going to create. Um, and that's more true than we realize. I mean, it, honestly, it's um, every bite you put into your body becomes a living cell. And so, you know, you got to consider, you know, what are you building? You know, um, one of the exercises I like to do with uh, my wellness clients, uh, I like to bring a pot and a little budding flower and I say, okay, we're going to repot this beautiful little budding flower and give it space to grow. And so, you know, everybody gets excited. And then I say, but instead of soil, I don't have any soil today. How about some Doritos and gummy bears? We're just going to squish them up, put them in there, kind of the same texture, right? And so they start squishing Doritos and gummy bears, and it's actually kind of fun for a minute. And then they, you know, put those down. And then I say, okay, now what we got to do is we got to place our little budding, uh, budding flower into that, our new Dorito soil. And you know, you, you kind of see the hesitation, like, really, is this gonna work? And then I say, and of course we've got to water our flour. So then instead of water, I give them a two liter of soda. Mm. And at that point, they're like, this is gonna kill this flour. And that's their aha. No, that's when we that's when they realize, oh, wait, I'm a living thing. If this is what I'm putting into my own body, how am I going to grow and and build properly? And, uh, and so that, that's kind of how I exclamate my junk in, junk out uh, concept. 
But again, Bill, it doesn't just uh, apply to our bodies. It also applies to our minds and our spirits. And I tell you what, junk in, junk out concept is harder for me when it comes to what I put in my mind than it is what I put in my body. Sure, I can go to carrots and hummus instead of Doritos. I've got that down, you know. But what's difficult for me is blocking out all of the negative messaging and, and you know, kind of tuning back into negativity in my mind and bad self-talk. And again, what, what is that feeding and what is that building in my mind and my spirit if I'm feeding myself those negative messages? Another comparison I, I use is if you've got a, a canvas, and you put a bunch of different colors on that canvas. In fact, my daughter and I just did a spark session on this. Another book I wrote was called Spark Forever, and it's for preteens. And we're doing a spark session on this now. And one of the things we talked about is if you have a canvas and you put a bunch of different paint colors all over the canvas, and those are your thoughts in your mind. Um, if you don't take the time to clear the canvas, how can you create anything new? You gotta clear the mind, get to that white canvas. And the solution to this junk out, junk and junk in junk out problem or uh, 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 process is to just take time to breathe. That's the solution. So move is my first concept. Breathe is my second second concept, and it's just so simple. But I, I want us to do this right now, okay? I want everybody to just take five deep breaths with me, okay? Just in and breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, out, two more. Hang in there with me, don't hang up. <laughs> in, one more. Did you notice it, Jeff? space. Totally new space. And that's all it takes to help you reset and think about what you're putting into your body and your mind. If you can take those deep breaths when you feel anxiety, if you take those deep breaths before you decide what you're going to eat, then it'll change your perspective on what you really want to put in. Because breath is life. And when you breathe in, you're reminding, you're taking yourself back to what gives you life. And it'll help you to make those natural choices. I love that you um, had the courage to even talk about stuff like breathing. You know, I um, I thought I was the the weirdo because I, I included in my book. I included in oh, my wait, Bill, Bill, the weirdo part probably still rings true. I'm just saying, hands down. And I <laughs> I, I let my weird flag fly like uh, like that's what we're here for. So I recognize a fellow weirdo when I see him. Part of your that's part of your constellation. Exactly, that's part <laughs> of. It. But that's you know. A lot of people think it's just light and fluffy and it's just something to add in there and it doesn't really matter, but that's the stuff that really does matter. And yep. if you apply this technique like throughout your day, great, but also you can tie this into your business so perfectly well. You know, I breathe like that. I, do t I take 10 deep breaths right before every signing appointment. Sometimes I'm walking up to the front door to do that. That has made all the difference. Guys, our work is not easy. I know it, it's simple, so we, we sometimes trick ourselves into thinking this is easy, but it's hard grinding work when you're out on the road and you're meeting strangers all day and you're absorbing their energy and their stories. I mean, they're in all kinds of places. Some are great, some are terrible places to be. So we've got, we got to take care of ourselves to brush that off to give us that clean canvas. I love that, Susie. So yeah. what's, what's part three of the Three to Thrive? Move, breathe, and believe. So the, the concept here is um, story for glory, uh, to remind you that your story does matter. And like I was talking earlier, you, you, can, you can decide whether or not to make the best of this life that you've been given and to share all of your talents, your experiences, your constellations. Um, and so uh, the idea is to believe in your story and believe that it can bring glory to other people and to your world. Um, and, uh, and so you have to believe that. I was listening to a podcast, uh, an Oprah podcast a while back with Dean and Ann Ornish. And, um, you know, something that Ann said that really kind of made me think, guys, I've been preaching all of this, believe in yourself kind of stuff. But 
you know what? If you don't, if you don't have that basis of I believe that what I have to give matters, then the motivation to move and breathe won't show up. So I believe really almost has to come first. Um, and so I, I talk about three different ways that you can discover your purpose. And that is contemplation, thinking about your past and your experiences and where that's brought you. And then uh, connection and how important it is when you connect with other people, you can see what you bring to, to, the, you know, to their lives and to your community. And then of course the constellations, you know, what are, what are those unique uh, experiences and talents that you have? And so through contemplation, connection, con constellation, you can recognize your reason to believe, and then you can move towards bringing your story to glory. I, I loved this part, especially, this is a big concept, belief, but it is so critically important because if you don't believe you're actually going to reach a certain level or you don't believe that something's possible, then imagine the effort that you put into something that you don't believe is possible. It's half ass. It's yeah. like, ah, oh, I might make it. It's a, it's a pipe dream at that point. But if you believe in the possibility, your effort, your motivation, the energy you put into anything that you believe in is going to be far more than if you don't believe in the possibility. Absolutely. That's your fuel for your fire. Yep, exactly. And belief is 100% your own personal responsibility. You're the only one that can control that. Sure, you can take data, you can get information, you can hear perspectives, but that switch to belief ha happens in your mind and your mind alone. Susie, this has been, I'm sorry, go right ahead. What were you gonna expand on that? I was that? just gonna say, you know, in, in the most in most recent time, um, I, I've only recently been starting to build my I Can Spark for the kids and, and, uh, and also how it connects to adults. And, uh, you know, at first when I was trying to figure out, well, how do I say it? What do I say? What do I post? And this whole social media thing, I, I mean, that was my daughter, my 12 year old daughter had to give me a tutorial on that. But, you know, at first I was doubting myself, like, is it really worth it? And I was looking for that affirmation, like, oh, who liked it? Who, who reposted? And then I realized, you know what, if that's what I'm looking for, then in the end, I'm not going to continue to be able to forward. Um, I, what I need to remember is that, uh, you know, whether, whether we grow this big social media, um, all the excitement around it or not, it's really, you know, what I can see when I connect with that individual is, and, and the, uh, you know, what light we create through that is really where I should be looking for um, my affirmation that I'm doing the right thing and, and the belief. That's, uh, that's powerful, powerful thinking. I think that would come with contemplation too and reflection. Yep. Uh, there's so many that, you know, we get caught up in our lives that we forget the reflection part. So we, sometimes we repeat mistakes. We learn the same lesson over and over and over again, because we forget just to sit back and say, oh yeah, that's what I did last time and it didn't work. So I'm going to do this this time. Susie, uh, you've shared a lot of great um, techniques for us. What recommendations do you have for, oh guys, we're going to be at, taking questions here in a minute. So if you want to start raising your hand, if you have any, we've got a few trickling in, but I just want to give you that heads up now. But what suggestions do you have for people to remind themselves throughout the day to be implementing stuff like this? You know what? Move, read, believe. It's three words. And, and so I would say, write down those three words, post them on your refrigerator, um, you know, get a tattoo that says move, breathe, believe. No, <laughs> maybe don't go that far. Uh, you know, those, whatever it is going to take, maybe on the alarms that you set for yourself in the morning, you can label it move, breathe, believe. Here's the thing. At the end of my book, um, I also make sure you understand that it's not linear. It's not, you got to move, breathe, and believe. It's not like a step by step. Um, it's cyclical so that you can hop in at any point. For me, um, I, you know, I personally, uh, my family has a history of depression, and I, I know that that is something that I've struggled with in the past. And so for me, when I wake up in the morning, that's really when I'm kind of low, and it's easy for me to not believe. Um, so I've learned for me that I have to get up and I have to start moving first because once I start moving and the endorphins kick in and then I'm breathing and that breath is taking me back to what really matters, then I'm back to believing. So, you know, you find, find what works for you and, and really kind of get to know and understand yourself. 
Um, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of most diet, or, or you know, even with exercise. Like for me, if I can keep it simple, my move, breathe, believe. And by the way, in the book, I do I do give a few tips on on food. Um, uh, you know, my, Michael Pollan, one of my favorite authors on food, he says eat food you know, mostly plants, not too much. That's pretty much my, uh, my philosophy as well. But, you know, move, breathe, believe. Three things that you can post anywhere, you can put on the, on the cover of your phone, uh, you know. And then like, like Bill said, a book that I have written, it, it simplifies it. It's something that you can always come back to. It's an easy read, it's like 50 pages. So it's, you know, you can pop it open and just kind of uh, uh, refuel and, uh, and of course, you know, you can stay connected with me um, on my I Can Spark channels and I'll, I'll continue to try to bring inspiration. Yeah, I love that. The, um, I love that you it simplified it. Like simple is so much easier. And these three words, move, breathe, believe. That's, uh, I was introduced to a three word concept from Brendan Burchard where he, um, you know, for each year he has a three word um, uh, mantra or focus for the year. I kind of took that and I started applying it to my signing. So how do I want to show up to this signing? And I had three words that would, while I'm breathing, I'm thinking of those three words, how am I going to show up to this appointment? This is exactly what the, that is. Just a reminder throughout the day. And I, I would encourage you to not be tricked by your mind right now who says, I'd never forget that. It's three words, move, breathe, believe. I, I, I got it. Trust me, come Monday morning, end of month, tomorrow, you're not, you're not going to remember it. It's going to go away. You're going to get caught up in your day and then you're just right back to where you are. So you, you can use modern technology. I use reminders on my phone. So, and I'll, I'll randomize them sometimes. So if, cause if I get the same appointment, the same reminder every day, my brain just says, Oh, it's just that. Yeah, so I try yeah. to mix it up a little bit and just remind, even if it, all it said, it popped up cause you can name your alarms on iPhones and uh, Android phones. So it'll just pop up 10 30 alarm goes off and it's move, 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 breathe, believe, or just one of them spread them out throughout the day, whatever might work for you. I love and that. You know, Bill, if you, I would encourage you guys to share these ideas with your family, share the, you know, share these concepts or get the book and, and read it together. Um, and then also if you have young children, you know, a lot of the stuff that I share on my I Can Spark panel would also be something that you guys can do together to connect and to, you know, help each other. Because at this point, Bill, when I'm low and I'm feeling like eh, my daughter's the one or my son, you know, they'll come and be like, mom, move, breathe, believe, you know, they, they kind of whip me into shape and uh, they're my support system in a lot of ways too. So. Yeah, having a support system and also not... Um, projecting too much expectation onto it is super important because not everybody's yeah. going, to, going to be excited about your new three, mon three word mantra, right? They're not going to be excited about your morning routine. They might eventually, but you're going to need that support. If they just know that you're down or you're, you know, they're, you're skipping your morning routine or you're not on the treadmill when you said you would, you know, they might be able to nudge you in the right direction there. Yeah, uh, you know what? Everybody should get a disco ball. Start your <laughs> nightly discos in your living room and I guarantee your family will be like, they'll either think you've lost your mind or they'll jump in and, and enjoy. Either way, though, it'll bring a lot of joy to your home and a lot of extra fun. And uh, so, yeah, that's... Well, you know, well, out of all the possibilities where my head goes is, I mean, you can't get a better conversation piece with by having a disco ball in the middle of your living room. I mean, everybody's going right. to ask, what is that? Yeah, that's and then, right. Yeah. Uh, Sandra says she has a disco ball. I love it. You're in good Yay, company. All right. These are your people. All right. I love it. Okay. Um, let's see if we have any questions. I know we do. Derek, you've got your hand up already. I was going to ask your question, but feel free to unmute and ask away. Hey folks, how you doing? Hi, Derek. All right. Susan, Bill and everybody else. Thank you so much. I've been trying to Reach Bill. I, I've been seeing him through YouTube, and and now you, Susie. The connection is strong, and it's a great team, and I can tell. Uh, so I'm 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 from Louisville, Kentucky, and speaking of disco balls, this is the only state that makes the disco balls. It's exclusive to Louisville. What? Yes, the company here makes them for all over the world, so you can have one personally made here. You know, I was I was born in Kentucky, so oh. maybe that's. That's why it's just so intuitive for me. Synchronicity, man. I love it. 
So, Susie and Bill, I've been in this business a year now, and I've evolved daily. Uh, my wife and I are in a limited liability partnership, Signature Mobile Notary, and we're doing well. And, you know, you can't become stagnant in this business, and we found that out the hard way, because like you said, Bill, you forget the, the mnemonics that make you successful every day, and then you fall back, and you're like, okay, I can't keep falling back in the same old rut daily. So, you know, we've struggled with pricing and, 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 and trying to figure out how not to undervalue ourselves and to remain competitive. Uh, do you have any advice on how to, to maintain and just to stay consistent and not stagnant? Susie, any feedback on that? Uh, you know, I think it's, especially since you're a team, I mean, just collaborating together, you know, and, and pushing yourself together, have that conversation every day. Uh, make it an intentional conversation every day. Um, you know, find find ways to you know get online and and compare uh, what other people out there in the market are doing. Um, and you know what? It, it, I, like I said earlier, there is a, a competition, obviously, but it's incredible when you collaborate with um, other companies out there in your area, or even even connect with other companies in Kentucky uh, or in Ohio in the tri-state area. They may have somebody that calls them and they can't get there or they, you know, they may be in Ohio and their customer just contacted them from Kentucky and they can send them to you. So um, consider, you know, extra collaboration in that way. Maybe even, maybe you could kind of develop some networking uh, meetups there in the Louisville area. Thank well, you. I guess once COVID-19 is. Right, yeah. right, after that. Yeah. Thank you. And, if, and if you don't mind, I'll chime in a little bit here too, Derek, because um, I know, first of all, we've got um, some of the Sign and Thrive team um, in Kentucky that's really working to start a Kentucky network of notaries that would probably really serve, it, serve you well to get dialed into that because he's, he's got a podcast. He's got, he's really trying to bring people together. So I can help you get connected to John that way. Uh, and expanding your network, like Susie said, is really the key. Uh, and you'll hear this in other industries too. People hit a plateau, whether it's an online course, whether it's a consulting company or whatever it might be, they, re they do great. They get to a certain level on their own and then you have to expand your network. You have to get a little more creative and step out. But I'll offer this to you and everybody else on the call too. One of my favorite affirmations that really helped keep me fired up was that there is someone in this city who needs my services today and it's my job to find that person. What that did for me was it opened up my mind. It's like, if my phone's not ringing, something's not right because I, I know somebody's in this city that needs my services. They just don't know about me yet. So it's my job to get in front of them. And that really opened my mind, got creative. I started creating excuses to get in front of people. Like, hey, I'm dropping documents off right around the corner from your office. You mind if I pop in and bring you Starbucks? You know, whatever it is, just so I could get that FaceTime with people I'm trying to build a relationship with. Awesome, great question. Anybody else have a question? Good luck to you, Derek. Good luck, Derek. Yeah, yep, thank thanks. You so much. Thank you, I appreciate this opportunity. You bet. Okay, I got some questions in the chat, so bear with me a minute. Great. Yeah, I'll get you guys uh, John's podcast info and a connection there. Oh, yeah, the link to the book, Minor Detail. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, I'll put that up at the end. I just have a link to Amazon right now. It's in the chat window, and of course, I'll send that out with the replay as well. Uh, she's got the ebook and also the hard copy. Uh, which she was kind enough to send to me. This is her copy with all her notes in it. So thank you for that, Susie. Appreciate it. How was the how was the book writing experience? Well, it, you know, I think when something is that strongly on your heart that you don't even recognize when it's a struggle and when it's difficult. Um, I actually had a, a week where I had to be away from work um, and. Um, I had a little extra time on my hands. I was out of town, so I didn't have the kids with me. And I literally sat down and did a lot of work during that time. Um, and it just kind of flowed out, you know, just because it was something that was so close to my heart. Um, all of the conversations I've had with notaries over the last 16 years, I just felt such a deep connection to what they need and, or, you know, what I, I felt like from our conversations was needed and, and how I could maybe share my heart and help in some way. And it just happened. Just came out. I love it. I love hearing and, that too. 
there are obviously there are you know probably a couple of hiccups in the book you probably found them in the notes and i was wanting to go and edit them before our podcast uh but at the same time i didn't want to take the book off of it. Amazon, you know, at this time when it might be the time when somebody wants to actually grab it. So I apologize for any spaces, space issues or missed commas, but um, sometimes the authenticity helps. Don't, they, don't even go there, Susie. Don't even go there. Because if I, the first thing I did when I got my book after I published it, as I did exactly what you did, I started going through and like, oh my gosh, how did they, how did the editor, how, yes. three editors, and it's riddled with misspellings and w wrong words and typos, but the content was good. You have to, at some point, you just have to go, and that's exactly what you did. I didn't even notice anything in your book, so only, okay. only when you wrote a little highlight, I was like, oh, I guess, I I guess now I it's all in big green letters, so now you sure see it. Uh, but uh, also, you mentioned that you posted the link, but you could go to iconspark.com, and the link is there. Fuzisivkov.com, the link is there, so a couple different places. Awesome. And we'll go through that again at the end here too, guys, so you can yeah, stay in touch with Susie. So Shantice has a great question. How do you handle the anxiety of being a new business owner? I've been at this less than a year with loan signing as my main focus. You probably hear this a lot. Yes. Well, what was the name again? Clarice? Shantice. Okay. So here, here's something that I think really helped me a lot. Um, and I put this actually in the book, but it's um, the idea of you, that you have to be inspired, be motivated uh, in, in order to accomplish things. And um, Mark Manson, I believe, who talked about the just do something principle, where you're not, you know, you don't have to wait for inspiration. You don't have to wait for that first phone call saying, hey, I need you to come to the signing. Um, you know. So sometimes you have to do something, even if it may not be the exact right thing. Uh, and there are gonna be, you know, bumps along the way, but if you're not moving at all, you're not gonna go anywhere. If you're moving, you might not be going exactly in the right direction, but at least you've got the momentum and you can veer the other direction once you figure it out. So I would say just do something every day to try to move your business. Um, and as Bill said, you know, Send a, send a text saying, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Let me bring you a Starbucks. Uh, just those little steps can make all the difference. Those, that's what makes the seed. Um, so even if it's the wrong thing, do it anyway. And eventually the, the movement will get you in the right direction. Yeah, I love that advice, Susie. Thank you for that. Because I think most people are just so terrified to make a mistake or make a wrong movement. Or what if I name my website this and I don't like it? Or what if I choose this name for my company and I don't like it? Or what if I say yes to this customer and I end up not wanting? Or I say no and I be a mistake. At some point, you just have to let it go and just know that we're all going to make mistakes. I talk about my mistakes and I encourage you to as well because that's that's a lesson that you're going to learn. And sometimes the lesson is so good that you'll never forget it. And then other times you have to keep relearning it a little bit, but you have to get in the arena and you're going to take some punches. You're going to have some scratches and bruises, but that's where the action is. That's where the victory is. However, you decide to identify that uh, for yourself, but you have to get in there. You have to just kind of trust it at some point and know that there's no mistakes so bad that is just going to destroy your business. I used to think that escrow officers had a, like a, a red phone, like a hotline, like um, Ronald Reagan and the president of Russia had back in the day. Remember that just red phone sitting on the White House desk? I thought escrow officers, every time they made a mistake, just got on there and said, oh my God, don't hire this guy. It's terrible. It doesn't happen like that at all. In fact, they're usually just gonna use you right away because you respond so well. So. Trust mm -hmm. that you've got value to bring to the marketplace. Hi, Bridget. Did you have a question? Oh, you want me to pull up? You okay. <laughs> um, put her on mute. And also remember that those mistakes add to your constellation. In the end, it might be something that, that you're going to be able to help somebody else with, with on the road. I mean, if Bill hadn't made mistakes, then he wouldn't be here today cheering us all on and, and sharing so much expertise with us. So uh, the mistakes actually are part of the process to help you grow. That's the growth mindset. Um, and one other thing I'd like to add about that is um, if it ain't scheduled, it ain't real. So, you know, you can't just sit around and think about all the things you want to do to grow your business. Start scheduling stuff. 
you know, put it on the calendar, reach out and make appointments. Because if it ain't scheduled, it ain't real and it probably won't happen. Yep, that's so true. So true. Mary Ellen, I see your hand up. Thank you for your patience. Hey, Hi. thank you for what you're doing. This is just a perfect Sunday afternoon on the porch and it's just what I needed. Thank you both so much. I wanted to add on this. There's something that I have to remind myself. Enjoy this. Have fun. This is so exciting. We are taking our skills and, and this level of awareness of other people and we're taking it out and helping them and they're paying us for it. You know, we're meeting people and, and after, after meeting and connecting with the people in the rural area where I live, I'm pumped. I just feel great. I don't go and do eight loan signings a day. That's not my type of business. That's not what I do. I, I'm a little bit different. Um, but enjoy it yeah. because that's what life is for. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for sharing Mary that. Mary Ellen, thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. That yeah, have fun. Yeah, it's the idea that we are, you know, kind of branching out and doing our own thing. We're not, you know, chained to a nine to five or a desk, maybe, you know, like this is exciting. So try to find the excitement in it all. That's, I, I love that you even brought that up, Mary. I love that you got excited by that, Susie, because if you can't find joy in this, there's no point in doing it. So this, this business gives us the flexibility to build our own calendar, to reclaim our agenda, to spend time doing the things we enjoy doing with the people we enjoy doing them with. And then it also gives us an unlimited income potential. I mean, it's, it's real. You can make, you can set a limit. You know, I only want to make $500 a month. I want to make a thousand a month. I want to make 10,000 a month. You get control over the effort that you get to put into this with no judgment from anybody else. And then this is legit. It's a legitimate business. You're providing a service. We're the last line of defense for the um, mortgage and identity fraud. I mean, this is exciting. This is a, this should be, you can get excited about this. I pinch myself even today, but I used to pinch myself all the time because I was terrified that this was Ill illegal. Something about this business. There was something about this business that, um, I was just terrified that they were going to come back and say, you can't make $150 an hour. You don't have a college degree or this, you know, it's something shady. It's not like that at all. There's a real opportunity here. And when you get dialed in and you start getting into that groove that we were talking about, this business can be everything that you want it to be. And that's worth expressing some joy about. Let's see if we have some other questions here. Yeah, Peggy says, I think the frustrating thing is getting started and being ready to go uh, with Same no calls. Same thing you would do if you were doing a makeover. All right, Bridget, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to take her out, I guess, here. We'll just put her in the waiting room there. Sorry. Sorry she's gone. Sorry, Bridget. Um, <laughs> I think, okay, self-doubt is evil. One, another, uh, that just reminded me of another mantra I use, guys, whenever I was um, working on the course, uh, the online course took an extra level of vulnerability and courage for me to get that out there. And I re almost didn't do it because I said, who am I to teach someone else how to do this? Who am I? So what I did is I created a mantra or an affirmation and I put it in my shower and I scheduled it on my phone and it's doubt and fear are not welcome here. And that helped me get through that. So if that serves you, uh, feel free to use it. Let's see. Full-time student, love Garrett, full-time student. Love it. Love it. Any other questions? Last-minute questions for Susie. We're coming up on the one hour. That was that went so fast, Susie. I know. I had a lot of fun. Um, I just wish I could see all your faces. I see a lot of names, but, uh, you know, when we came onto the call, as I was looking at the names and the faces, <laughs> but as I was looking at my screen, um, I just want you to know that I was just like, Sending so much love and good energy and blessings to all of you for showing up for yourselves today. So, yeah, thank you. And thank you to all, to all of you that showed up today to grow yourself and your business. And Susie, thank you for your contribution to the notary community. It's been 16 years in the making, and I know it takes courage, vulnerability uh, to publish a book. And I'm just really glad that you did it. I think this is exactly what our industry needed right now. So thank you again for being here and thank you to everyone. If I put in the websites in the chat window, you can go to iconspark.com, right Susie? 
Yes, I can spark.com or just my name, Susie Sivkov.com. But I can spark if you've got, especially if you've got younger kids. Go there, have some fun um, watching some of the videos that we have there. And, um, and yeah, thank you guys for having me. I, you know, the reason I'm here is because of all of you and, and what, you know, how you've led me and, and uh, inspired me. So thank you. Yeah, I love that. And I'll include all the links uh, down below if you're on YouTube. It'll be in the show notes and it will also be in the follow-up email afterwards. So thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great end of month. Go dance. <laughs>